What's going on guys? It is the Zoomer Value Investor here, here to bring you yet another stock analysis, my due diligence on a company. Really excited to get into this one. This is one you guys might have heard of. Hasbro Inc. It is a toy and entertainment company headquartered out of Jersey, New Jersey, here in the United States of America. If you guys don't know, Jersey is one of the states with one of the most kind of like lenient tax laws. So a lot of uh, corporate HQs just kind of like to like pack themselves in there. <laughs> In that small little state there. And yeah, so let's get into Hasbro. So, um, you know, this is this is a company where when I look at it and the valuations that it's at right now and what the company is and the cash flows it has and what it stands for, as well as the other thing I did notice is that the market does allow this company a little bit of a premium over the years. So with the valuations that right now, I'm looking at somewhere from like a clean 50 to 100% gain on this. And I think within two years. So ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, let's get into Hasbro stock and the gathering of magic returns. So at a glance, you are buying into Hasbro entertainment franchise. Now, when I think about Hasbro, I think about Transformers. I think about um, the Parker Bros who own things like the Monopoly Man and all the, Monop the Parker Bros games like Battleship and all of those. I'm thinking about My Little Pony. I'm thinking about Peppa Pig, you know, those kind of like childhood cartoons that children love and, and still watch the um, you know replays as well as maybe any new productions of. Not only this, you are also buying into Wizards of the Coast, the esteemed gaming company who is in charge of both Dungeons and Dragons and Magic the Gathering, two of the biggest games with some of the biggest, most passionate communities out there in the entire world. If you guys don't know how big Magic the Gathering is, I had a roommate in college who actually took a class on games and in that class the professor made them spend a few weeks out of the semester learning how to play Magic. To this university professor, Magic was in some cases an exemplary game design that needed to be academically showcased in this class. And of course Dungeons and Dragons regaining a lot of popularity very recently, um, not only with just people's desire to game, but also you see things like um, Stranger Things, the Netflix series, um, kind of almost collabing with uh, Dungeons and Dragons with all of the different um, characters and stuff they brought to life on their live action show over there at Netflix. Today you're talking about roughly a little less than an 8 billion market cap company on all of this ownership, all these IPs, all of, you get all of this for less than $8 billion. That's of course if you were to buy out the company uh, without no goodwill, which we'll be, we will not be doing over here at the Zoomer Valley Investor Channel with only our Zoomer level of capital over here. Uh, we will be buying shares of this equity. Can you imagine if I came on this YouTube video and I was just like, hey, I'm buying the whole company, buying Hasbro. Currently on the market, it uh, goes for around uh, $55 a share. Uh, I did this PowerPoint a little earlier. It's fluctuated around 58 a lot recently. Um, I think around here is a great price to add. Personally, I've been adding um, just dollar cost averaging into this. I've been really enjoying the process of accumulating shares in this business because I see the long road, I, I, I see all these IPs and what they're currently selling at. I see this as, as, as very good value. And I'll explain why, of course, uh, Later, I'm just, just making sure you guys understand that one of the big draws of this play is that you are getting ownership of a cornucopia of IP here with Hasbro. At their peak, they were about a $14 billion market cap company, sold for about $123 uh, per share on the market. This was during the times of Q3, Q4 in 2019. I think that this will retrace within a couple years. I think that this company will be back towards that spot roughly $100 share price, um, roughly $14 billion market cap. Of course, taking a look at the valuation here, buying the company at about 1.3 times price to sales. As you can see here in the last five years of valuation data, this company's never, ever, ever really sold that cheap, ever. One thing I love historically, when we look back at Hasbro's valuation and all the valuation data, is we see the markets kind of had a reputation of giving Hasbro a bit of a premium towards the broader index. So you see the, na the next 12 months price to earnings has fluctuated higher than the next 12 months price to earnings of the S&P 500 index. You see here our NTM price to earnings typically over the last five years trended around 20. S&P next 12 months price to earnings over the last five years 
It's not been nowhere close to 20. It's been like half or three fourths of that. You also look into the last 12 months price of earnings over here, and that's where things get pretty lucrative. Uh, it looks like Hasbro stock's been allowed over the last five years, somewhere around like a 40 price of earnings. And of course we're buying it below that. We're buying it at a next 12 months price to earnings of 12. I think it's a really good inflection point here with the valuation data. I am most personally impressed with the price sales here, of course. Um, the Magic of the Gathering has been selling like hotcakes lately, um, but there's a lot of conspiracy as to why that is. Um, but they did recently report for the first time a billion dollars in revenue from that trading card game alone. Ladies and gentlemen, this company is printing cash, they're sitting on a boatload of IP, and they sell for less than $8 billion. I know investors who were willing to pay $200 billion for Disney, and I get ownership in all of these IPs for less than $8 billion. Ladies and gentlemen, what are the bear cases here of the company Hasbro? So of course we have economic macro. Um, it's no secret that we're bordering a recession right now. It's no secret that there's a liquidity crunch going on. It's no secret that there's the Fed tightening is putting, hammering the market. The dollar's becoming more valuable. Price of assets are going down. It's just a tighter market. So of course a company like Hasbro is gonna be greatly affected in a scenario like this, especially when it's a company that typically is allowed a premium. One of the main issues is a short report from Bank of America resetting their fair value estimation of the company from around mid $70 per share to about $48 per share. Why did Bank of America re-rate this company so much lower? Well, Bank of America has a very polarized opinion on something going on in the magic community right now. Essentially, the community is in an uproar over an overprinting of cards or essentially the market value of certain rare cards in the market of magic has gone down significantly recently and that is being blamed mostly by the community on things like Hasbro, Wizards of the Coast, um, who obviously are in charge of printing and distributing the cards. Personally, I believe Magic the Gathering will be going nowhere no time soon. I think Magic the Gathering is almost like a game that's just getting started, especially when you've seen their sales. And it's really become kind of like a nerdy, gamey, kind of like mainstay. Like it's not really gonna go anywhere. I already alluded to the situation back in college where my college roommate actually, when they took a game design course, they had to learn how to play magic cards. So I do kind of largely think that this Bank of America downgrade is, is largely FUD, and I think Bank of America is not seeing through the fact that gamers raging within the community at the devs slash the producers of the game, that's always cyclical. There's always a cyclicality in nature that them having to rage at them Obviously, normally that'll prompt them to somehow like change the way they're doing things and then the gamers would be slightly happier to go back to voting with their feet, voting with their wallets, spending more money. Um, but the, you know, the thing I just really want to point out that Magic the Gathering cards don't seem to be like slowing down in sales anytime soon. So I actually kind of am leaning towards the hypothesis of there is a natural growth in the community of people who want to learn how to play magic cards over the last few years. Another thing I really want to talk about this business is what is monetizable here of this business? Where do we get the best margins out of this business? Well, it's not so much going to be in the actual like toy sector. So Hasbro doesn't make a ton of money out of distributing things like Mr. Potato Head and whatnot, like actual physical toys, because it only makes around a 10% margin on that aspect of the business. Now, where I believe Hasbro really has the opportunity to rake in the cash, you know, currently and as well as obviously going forward, you know, and they have a whole plan for this, is their online IPs and their online gaming divisions. So for example, Hasbro is licensing out things like the Monopoly Man, so casinos could run games with the Monopoly Man in their casino, and then, you know, Hasbro's gonna take a cut of those uh, those profits from that casino with that, that IP deal. Not only that, but things like online Dungeons of Dragons, you know, obviously ran by Wizards of the Coast, and online Monopoly is growing in popularity as well, and growing more and more of a player base and calling for that. For that aspect of the business, there's a lot to be excited there, for sure. As for the toy business, well, the toy business, uh, I guess I want to use the term Frankenstein company. It's like, you kind of, it's predictable. You know how it's going to walk, you know how it's going to move. It's almost like just like Frankenstein, just going to give you like a 10% margin business. I think that the most exciting part of Hasbro is really like the IP you're buying into once again, and the fact that they are really starting to monetize online and monetize as like an entertainment mass media. Which brings me into my bull case for the company. We have an immense, immense amount of IP at Hasbro, and it's just, when you when you really put it in a picture, you know, things like the thumbnail, Dungeons and Dragons, there's, there, there's so many different casts of colorful characters when it goes into Hasbro stock, and um, I, I think like 
you need to kind of just think in a little bit of a bigger picture here of like what all do they really own and, and how valuable is this really and is this in the hearts and the minds of people and things of that nature. On the market today, Hasbro sells at 23 times lower the price of a company like Disney. Whereas Disney's around a 130, 150 billion dollar market cap company, Hasbro is less than eight billion dollars. And that's not even considering valuations. Even from a valuation standpoint, Disney just trades so much hotter at a hotter premium. While Hasbro also does historically trade at a premium between the Bank of America report and everything going on with the magic community um, and as well as obviously the economic macro I'm sure that's also for sure been hammering the stock as well this has all brought the company down to what I believe is a price of fair value like fair value with stark margin of safety at this price I think this is a very very attractive price to add ownership into the company and that is something I've been moving on personally again you know you just really think about ownership what that really means and how much you could really profit from something of that nature you know all this Hasbro I'm accumulating right now I, I could get rid of it whenever I want to whenever it served me well the online casinos and monopolies and all of the online franchising of IP, that business is a higher margin business. And I really think they're starting to take off that aspect of their business. I believe there's great valuation arbitrage here. We just consider the fact that with a company like Hasbro that normally does trade at a premium, it's actually, it's valuation characteristics are coming much, much more in line with the broader index like the S&P. And I think that's really making the business very, very attractive. I absolutely would expect that premium to return to the business, um, but I'm not absolutely counting on it either when I look at my conservative estimates. But yes, I do believe the premium will return. I think it'll return when the reputation of the business starts to return and when the reports start to get more universally bullish. Obviously, Bank of America is kind of a household name in the financials. When the reputation of this business returns, I really do believe that the premium of the business will return. And I believe that the bank reports more across the university will become more university line bullish. Bank of America kind of is an outlier, um, you know, with their short report. However, it still is a household name in the financials. Bank of America, huge bank, obviously, whatever they say, people are going to put credence behind. But when I look at the business, I look at the Transformers movie coming out this summer. I look at the online uh, Dungeons and Dragons show on Amazon Prime that's been popping off. I look at um, the communities behind Dungeons and Dragons and Magic that have been popping off and as well as the things with online casino monopoly and leveraging out their online IP I, I believe that there's tremendous upside here. So yes, there is a Transformers film coming out this summer. As you can see that Transformers live-action films have become a household name. Uh, the film studios uh, have invested 1.1 billion into the films and they've turned a profit around $4.8 billion. This has been an incredibly profitable franchise and an incredibly enjoyable franchise that the fans have loved, cherished, made tons of memes out of, and they're pretty cool movies. I mean, you know, if you like Pacific Rim or you've seen anything of that nature of Transformers, it's not too far behind that. Giant robots just battling it out on the big screen. And as you can see there, yes, Hasbro does get a lot of the accreditation here because they own the intellectual property behind Transformers. So not only are they getting you know a lot of accreditation here in these films that are generating billions of dollars, but Hasbro is also taking the cut on those royalties. So in June 2007, that's when the first Transformers live action film came out and it was a critical success. The thing I really want to point out is Hasbro's around a $19 per share stock in the summer before that film's release in the summer of 2006. So it's really interesting here, right? And I just wanna really make this a teachable lesson that Wall Street prices things in in finicky ways here in the stock market. I personally believe that Wall Street was decently aware and trading kind of based off of the assumption of the success of Transformers in the summer of 2007. So that's when you see the stock really start to start moving to the upside about 10 months before that film came out. That's like three and a half financial quarters. So ladies and gentlemen, that is why I'm just putting the point of, this is why I am the Zoomer value investor. This is why I am comfortable moving on these stocks when people probably would otherwise not. I mean, who thinks this is attractive to go just investing your capital in a stock when you have things like Bank of America coming out with like bearish reports? But that is the unpredictability of the stock market. And that is why I personally am not a macro analyst. That is why I am more of a business and securities analyst. I am the Zoomer value investor. I want to see what company I'm buying. That is my primary focus. But yeah, 
the primary lesson of this slide is do not underestimate the power of this Transformers franchise. You're already really starting to see a return in the movie industry and a return of that cash flow that the movie industry and those summer blockbusters are known to have. You saw Paramount, another stock I've called out here on my channel that I do own, release their Top Gun Maverick film, a critical success generating billions of dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, the money is coming back into movies. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, there was a lull during the pandemic, during those hard, difficult times. However, the crave for entertainment and stories, it is back. I personally believe that this Transformers franchise and the multiple, multiple movie by movie success that it has had that turned four times the profit on their $1 billion investment, four to five times their profit on their $1 billion investment. And what catalyzed Hasbro on a bull run from the summer of 2006, from $19 per share, all the way to around $123 per share in Q3, Q4 of 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe a decent amount of that was marked by the market having to price in and give respect to Hasbro of discovering how valuable this, this IP is in Transformers. And just keep in mind, this isn't the only thing Hasbro is on top of. Hasbro's on top of so many different other IPs, but I just think this is so cool. I mean, these are Harry Potter type numbers that we're talking about here. When you look at how much cash flow this, these, this film series has gotten. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching my video. I really hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. Please leave a comment if there's anything on your mind in these crazy financial markets. Really appreciate your time. Let me know what you think about Hasbro stock. Peace.